right, so we're going to go through the New Testament um, and jump around a bit. Okay. We're not going to deal with a specific chapter, but um, we're going to talk about some parables. All right. Y'all know I've been trying to give you these parables for a long time now, you know, right? All right, um, you know, uh, we're going to deal with the parable of uh, being rooted in good ground. Okay, so you can call this good ground. It, uh, um... Uh, yesterday's class was called The Message, all right? Um, so don't call that class good ground. We didn't get to go into good ground. Y'all know that, right? The ones that were here yesterday. Okay? All right, what's the goal? <laughs> what's the goal? Yeah, make it to the kingdom of heaven. How we, how we going to make it to the kingdom of heaven? What? What? You got to be rooted in good ground. Okay? That's how we're going to make it. I know everybody might not be familiar with that. Um, let me just take that to you. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me just show you something real quick. Let's go to, uh, let's go to um, Mark chapter 4. Everybody go to Mark chapter 4. I'm gonna give you uh, um, the fundamentals of this of this uh, of this uh, of this topic of this parable, um, which is the basics. Okay, we can't go into the full blown out class that we was gonna have because that's gonna take, you know, uh, the Sabbath is almost out. Does everybody understand that? So generally, we're supposed to be doing a couple of chapters. So I'm gonna give you the fundamentals, the basics of the understanding of what it is, of what it means to be rooted in good ground. Okay. Let's look at um, uh, St. Mark chapter 4, and uh, let's, look at the, uh, let's look at the ninth verse, and let's, we're going to pay close attention to this, St. Saint, Saint Mark chapter 4, verse 9, okay? All right, read that, St. Mark chapter 4, verse 9. And he said unto them, read on, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. He that have ears to hear, let him hear, read on. And when he was alone. They that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Okay, so he just finished talking about another parable. Okay, and when he finished talking about this other parable, um, he asked, you know, he said, those that have ears to hear, let them hear, which means the people that can understand what he's saying, understand where he's coming from. Everybody understand that, right? Okay, so when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve. So it wasn't just the twelve, it was they that was about him with the twelve, asked of him the parable. Everybody got that, right? Read on. And he said unto them. Read on. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Read it one more time. And he said unto them. Come on. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Read on. But unto them that are without. Okay, that's the key word right there. Unto them that are without. Read on. All these things are done in parables. Okay, so what does this clearly mean? This literally means that Christ do not, he do not want, is not his intentions, is not God's intentions for everybody to have the truth. Okay? You got people that's going to be without the truth. Everybody got that? The people that's without are the nations. And the people that's without are the Israelites that um, clings to the nations and follow the nations and partakers of the ways of the nations. Everybody understand that, right? Okay, without is talking about without the knowledge, without the truth. Everybody got that, right? Let me just give you some some history on without. Get get uh, the book of uh, get the book of uh, Revelations chapter eleven. And read the first verse all the way down. Revelation chapter eleven, verse one, all the way down. And uh, give everybody some good time to get there while I check something else. Yeah. 
Right. Revelation chapter 11 and verse uh, 1. Read that. And there was given me a reed. Come on. Like unto a rod. Come on. And the angel stood, saying, rise and measure the temple of God. Measure the temple of God. The temple of God has to be measured because you want to make sure that everybody can fit in the temple of God. So this temple of God is talking about in the kingdom of, in the kingdom of heaven. Everybody understand that? You know, who, how many people is going to be in the kingdom of heaven? We want to make sure that there's enough room to fit the people that's going to be within the temple. Everybody understand that, right? Read on. And the altar. Read on. And them that worship therein. Yeah, you got to make sure there's enough room. You want to be busting at the seams. You want to be all on top of each other, right? Read on. But the court, which is without the temple. But the court, which is without the temple. Read on. Leave out. This is the people that can't get into the temple. Don't measure that. Because we already know it's going to be a whole lot of people that ain't getting in. So the court that's without the temple, leave it out. Don't measure it. Read on. And measure it not. Read on. For it is given. It is what? For it is given. It is what? It is given. Read on. Unto the Gentiles. Now you clearly see the Gentiles. The Bible is telling you the Gentiles is the people that is left without. There's a whole doctrine in the world that Satan is using, um, trying to convince people that the Gentiles are going to be saved, right? And when you read, when you go to the end of the Bible, the Bible clearly tells you, Christ is clearly telling you the Gentiles are left without. They didn't get into the temple. Everybody understand that, right? No space, no room for them. Everybody understand that? Everybody got that, right? And that's not far fresh. That's not hard to understand. Because when you read, go to Hebrews chapter 12. You're going to see it ain't no place for the Gentiles. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. This is so as Israelites, you can know that you in the truth. The fact that you understand these, the truth, you should know that you're in the truth. The fact that you understand it. When people tell you they can't understand, I said this a lot of times. Y'all always hear me say this. When people say they can't see it, I'd be like, that's too damn bad for you. Yep. Because when you can't see this, you understand what I'm saying? At the time you can't see it, that means you're part of that condemnation. You're part of the people that is without, that can't get in. See, the Bible tells us from the time of John the Baptist all the way up until the time that Christ started his ministry, um, people was pressing to get in the kingdom of God. There was a press. There was a big crowd, and everybody was just trying to find their way in. You got a lot of people that ain't going to never find that way. Everybody understand that? So the Gentiles ain't going to get in. There ain't no place. There ain't no seat for the Gentiles. The Gentiles is not on the sign of the 12 tribes. Okay? Everybody understand that? If you still think that you're an African, then too bad for you. Huh? Huh? If you want to be West End Indian, then that's just too bad for you. But if you want to be Benjamin, then you can come on in. Right? Come on home. You want to be Ephraim and, and Judah and Gad and Issachar, then come on home. Come on home. But if you want to be left out, <laughs> then continue to be a part of these nations. Do everybody understand that? If, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Read that for me, please. Lest there be any fornicator. See, this is the reason why they left out. You know, it, it's not just because of their deeds, but don't, don't be like them is what God is saying. Lest there be any fornicator. Read on. Or profane person as Esau. Or as Esau. Everybody know who Edomites are, right? Everybody know who Esau is, right? Everybody know who the Edomites are, right? Everybody know who Esau is, right? Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? Get into saying the American white man, the French white man, the German white man, the British white man. Understand that. That's who they are. Everybody got that? Those are the Edomites. Read on. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Okay, because what? He despised the birthright. The scriptures clearly tell you that he didn't want to be righteous. The birthright means what? That he had to be righteous. The birthright, the right of the firstborn was that you had to be righteous and follow God. He despised that. He didn't want to be righteous. So he gave it up for a morsel of meat. Because he was hungry, he sold a birthright. And the meat wasn't even done yet. Everybody understand that, right? 